What's up, Bertini fam? So as you can see, I'm out here at the Trask Performance booth. Again, this is day two for me. Make sure if you're interested in coming by and checking out the bike, you come and swing by and you say what's up. Also, don't forget, Trask is doing free turbo installs. So if you're interested in putting on a turbo kit onto your bike, make sure you come and check them out and let them know that Michael Bertini from YouTube sent you and they'll go ahead and take care of you. All right, now staying within the theme of turbos, which we're gonna be discussing a lot, this week with Trask Performance, they've been giving me access to a lot of exclusive content here. Make sure if you have not yet already, hit that subscribe button, you hit that subscribe button right now. This way you can stay up to date with all of my future content. With that being said, go ahead and roll the intro. All right, now we're gonna link back up here with Eric in a second and he's gonna walk us through some of the sounds of these turbo bikes and give us some knowledge on these turbo bikes so you guys can get a heads up on what you can expect if you were interested in turboing your bike. Cool, so as you guys see here, I have Eric back with me. Now we're gonna go ahead and get into some of the turbo components, so I'm gonna go ahead and get down here. Um, we'll start from the very front. Now, Eric, quick question. In terms of the different kits, I know like um, if I potentially did one on my bike, right, I would need the stage two, I believe. Yes, you would need a stage two because you're at a 131 displacement. Damn! Okay. So stage two kits start at 120 cubic inches. Um, anything below that is a stage one. Um, our turbo kits are made for 2002 and newer bikes that have Delphi fuel injection. So in 2002, the smallest motor was an 88. So that's the smallest engine we will do on a twin cam or Milwaukee 8 motor is an 88. It goes all the way up to 143 inch motor, wow. um, the SNS crate motor. We Jesus. actually have a kit that can go on there. Um, we've done a few of them. They're <laughs> That's very, insane. very powerful. That is insane. Very, very 143 powerful. cubic inches with a turbo kit on it. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> that we, sounds... even, we even have a kit for a Sportster, but the Sportster needs to be an 07 or newer and okay. have fuel injection. And it's got to be a 1200. The 883s just don't produce enough exhaust volume to really spin the turbo efficiently. Wow. Well, talk to me about that actually a little bit. So um, a one quick question actually before I jump to that is on the stage kits. How many stage kits are there and is it just pretty much bore size that determines what your stage kit is? Correct, correct. So there's two stages from us at Trask. Yep. Um, stage one is 88 up to like a 117 and then 120 and larger is a stage two. The only difference in those kits in general is the size of the turbo. 22 millimeter turbo goes for the stage one, 28 millimeter turbo goes for stage two. Got it. So this. And, and is this the turbo? Is this the turbo? What is the turbo in this setup? So the turbo is this section here, okay? There's a hot side of the turbo here, cold side of the turbo. Hot side is because both of your exhaust ports, so your rear, rear cylinder exhaust goes here, your front cylinder exhaust obviously comes from the front. Yep. They both dump into the hot side of the turbo. The exhaust gases spin the impeller on the hot side. There's a shaft that connects to the cold side. The cold side also has an impeller. It spins and then sucks air through your air cleaner here into the charge tube, then into the pressurized plenum, and then into your engine. Ah, and so th is that why th these turbo setups are called forced induction? Correct. It's literally forcing the air into your motor. Correct. Correct. Got it. Okay, and now talk to me a little bit about the sound. So, because a lot of people say that jet planes sound like now like these bikes, right? You start right. up these bikes, it sounds like you just started up a jet plane, sure. right? And for a lot of old school car guys like myself, that's the appeal, is that yeah. sound. You know, you yeah. start up, it's like, ooh, I'm in a jet now, yeah. you know? And so, uh, talk to me a little bit about those sounds, is what's making that whining sound? Sure. Is, it's is, an impeller. Okay. So, so a jet engine, if you've ever seen one before, they start one like on a tarmac when you're when you're walking to your plane. Yeah. I'm from a small town. Yeah. You have to walk outside to our planes, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you see, there's fins in there. Yeah. Okay? When those fins start spinning, they make a sound. It's the same thing in here. There's yeah. actually fins that the exhaust is spinning them. Okay, so it's gonna create a whining sound. And you're also gonna get some from the front because it also has impellers. Yeah. That's why the, the pitch kind of gets higher as you rev it up. So it's, it's just an impeller sound. That's all it is. It's Got just air. Uh, now question, what is this thing right here and why do sometimes I see fire 
coming out of some of these. <laughs> okay, this is a wastegate, okay? What this does is it dumps the exhaust gases um, once this is spinning at a certain certain RPM, uh -huh. okay? Um, so it doesn't overboost. Uh -huh. So the wastegate along with the, the blow-off valve regulate how much boost pressure is going into the engine. So this the exhaust is coming out of here. So when you oh. see flames coming out, it's the same as it'd be coming out of an exhaust pipe. Um. So you can see it's connected to your rear cylinder. Um, oh, light. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. It's coming out from here and then here. Man, that is crazy. It looks like, and it's hard to put into words. Obviously, I'm hoping that people come and visit you guys while you're here sure. um, at Daytona Bike Week and, and at any of the future places that you guys go and do shows at. But seeing these things in person, like, it, it, it's, it's hard. It's difficult to put into words that, like, all that is here. And so I'm assuming your R&D process to have creating had to create this like it must have been absolutely insane yesterday we were speaking to nick and he was saying like how he even started the first one right i can't even imagine at like this level what it took for you guys to get to this point in r d sure. sure and a lot of it is is based off the nick's original kit that he's done it's just been improved on over time um even eight years ago when i started here the plenum was a lot different than it is now we yeah. were actually welding aluminum pieces onto the plenum now everything is machined. It's all connected by fasteners. It's all O-rings. Like it, yeah. it's come a long ways in even just eight years. Yeah, this this to me, and so one thing I was talking about with Nick yesterday is like the engineering and innovation behind it. It's like, you know, when Nick was sharing with me, he goes, look, I, I produce cool shit that I like. Mm -hmm. If I don't like it, it's not going on a bike, Yeah, you know? And for me, that, that's a big deal because when you see stuff like this and the innovation that goes into it, it's like, man, you could see that somebody actually put thought. Like yeah. it wasn't like, oh, I want to make something that looks really cool and that's it, sure. right? There's a lot of thought and engineering that goes behind creating like top quality pieces like these. Yeah. Very cool. Now, the different exhaust options, talk to me about that. So I know when you and I spoke, potentially, you know, going with a kit, right, myself, um, I was like, oh, you know, I want a pipe that comes right out here and goes straight down, right? Because potentially, and I'm not going to give away any hints, but I might be going to mid controls at some sure. point, right? And so I, you know, I spoke about that because I like the look, I want the most sounds out of it, if you will. Right. And so talk to me about the different exhausts that you guys offer because a lot of custom exhausts you guys have that you guys can do. Um, is there any one exhaust that's like better for if I wanted all of the loud sure. sounds and stuff? It all depends on what's gonna fit the bike. There's no real better exhaust, okay? We offer multiple different kits. A lot of them are to solve problems. Our most popular kit is our straight out the back. It's our OG kit is what we call it. Oh, the it. OG kit, it comes yeah. Comes with either single side or a dual. A lot of guys have cutouts in their bags. Yeah. All we're doing is solving the problems with the cutouts in the bags. It's a real traditional look. It's not something really obscure. Yeah. A lot of guys want a bike to be a sleeper look. Yeah. You know, kind of, the sound kind of gives it away, <laughs> but overall, if you're not on that side, hey, you know. It, 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 it's it's just fun. Yeah, everybody's having fun. Yeah. Um, you know some of the other kits that we've come up with. It's because of stuff that we've done on custom bike builds because we build a lot of custom bikes. Yeah. Um, and people see them and then they want them themselves. Yeah. This is a very good example of it. This particular kit was built specifically for our assault series. Got um, it. As of today, I have sold two of them. At oh the wow. Show. So we don't bring very many. These take about a week to produce because it's one guy literally sitting down and weld the hand doing this whole kit. Yeah, this so. is, I'm hoping this comes out in the video, but the welds on this thing are like, I mean, this is art. Like the way that I see this, you know, these different welds here, this is like artwork. And I'm hoping you guys can appreciate the quality um, in the video on these. I mean, this is just really, really nice. I love the carbon tie-in. Obviously I know, Everybody has their own personal preference and taste. Like you said, the biggest kit that you guys saw, the most, the more common one is the OGs, right? Because yeah. I know a lot of guys want to fill up their bags, right? And so that makes sense. Um, and then, so how many different, aside from getting into like these custom, like this kind of work, sure. right? Because stage two, I'm assuming there's a lot of custom that goes into a stage two? There is. Uh most of the actual kits that we have can be stage one or stage two. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the same. Oh, so you it's can the same design kit. Yeah, it's just using a bigger turbo. Um, in our stage one kits, you can get kits that are actually internally wastegated. When we get ah. the turbos from Garrett, they have a wastegate built in already. These are Garrett turbos you're using. Yeah, we're using Garrett turbos. For those of you guys who don't know this from the car world, the automotive world, 
Garrett literally makes the best turbos. Obviously, I'm giving my opinion now on these things, but coming from the car world, if you look at some of the highest end cars, Garrett is providing those turbochargers. So um, that's a big deal that obviously that you guys are using that kind of quality on these bills. It's not, you know, some rinky ding knockoff, you know, right. turbocharger. This is top, top stuff. Yeah. All right, so Eric is gonna go ahead and start up the bike. This way we can hear what the turbo actually sounds like. And he's gonna give us some revs and then we'll talk a little bit about what we heard. One, that sounded completely badass. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever get the Kool-Aid smile off my face every time I hear a turbo bike. It's just like, it is, it, it, it's next level. Um, talk to me a little bit about what we just heard, the sounds of the bike. On idle, when it's just sitting here and we start it, you're hearing the turbo spin. It's not doing anything. It's not gonna create boost. I can crack the throttle all day long. It's not doing anything. Yep. It's just acting as an exhaust system because yep. that's all a turbo is, is a mechanical exhaust system. Um, to create boost, you need to be under load, okay? Um, if you've ever ridden in a diesel pickup or a semi or been next to a semi when you start going up a hill and you can hear the turbos spooling up, yep. that's because the engine needs power. So we can make that same thing happen just by giving it throttle and demanding power on our own to create boost and, and give you that, that performance that, that you're looking for out of the Harley. So question, um, turbos need to be under load in order to build what's known as boost. Correct. Got it. Now, how many pounds of boost are these bikes typically running? Do stage ones run different amounts than stage two? No, we run eight pounds of boost for 91 octane gas on stage one or stage two. Now, if the engine's built, properly for a turbo with forged pistons and made strong yeah you can run additional boost at some point in that equation you're going to need to introduce some race gas because if you run the 91 octane the engine will detonate but did you die so it's a fine line eight pounds of boost on pump gas i have customers that have over a hundred thousand miles on their bikes holy crap. and ride cross country it's not uncommon for our customers at sturgis every year to either be going to the east coast or the west coast they literally jump on their turbocharged freshly turbocharged bike and right across country so a lot of people that i meet with that have turbos your y'all's turbos on their bikes i've met with people who have like 40 50 thousand yeah. miles so when you say 100 it's very believable at least to me sure. because i've met people who are like they literally ride across the country you know they have the nice cushion seats they're not yeah. running you know performance yeah. bagger seats sure. right sure. but they're running the nice cushion seats and they'll go all the way across from florida all the way to california yeah. and back with a turbo on it yeah it's like so it's very reliable as well it's as reliable as you maintain your motorcycle wow those yeah. same customers if they didn't have a turbo on their bikes would be running the same amount of mileage their bikes are beautiful they change the oil they're doing all the right things yeah your motorcycle will run indefinitely as if as long as you take care of it got granted it. there's things that break made by human everything will break yeah but as, as long as it's properly maintained it'll it'll run a long long time turbo cartridges don't go bad yeah you know only things that are going to hurt them are contamination or excessive heat yeah so in lieu of those two things obviously that guy that has a hundred thousand miles on his turbo he's yeah. never changed a cartridge yeah yeah never yeah that's so. awesome so now let's talk pricing on these kits sure let's talk pricing on stage one kits let's talk pricing on stage two kits for a stage one kit Assuming they do not have a big board kit, what is a, a turbo kit going to cost from an investment standpoint onto their bike? Okay, so first off, I'm gonna say every one of our turbo kits needs to have a Thundermax ECM, okay? If you already have one on it, awesome. You don't need to rebuy it, okay? It's, it's on the bike. If you need to buy it, they range from $989.95 up to $1,088.95. Um, our turbo kits range in price, okay? They start at $55.90 for either our Fury kit or the OG kit without the dual, okay? If you wanna add the dual to the OG kit, it's uh, $499. Um, then from there, you go to our Assault turbo kit. It's $66.80 and the Typhoon is $6,900.
The only reason those two kits are more expensive is they come with the external weight gate, waste gate, the tile waste gate, and they're they're custom made. So they take a little more time, a little more materials to make. So they, they all produce the same amount of power though. That's one thing. There's not one kit that's better than the other. They're all equal in the amount of power they produce. So you're telling me that for under pretty much seven grand, especially if you're getting an install here at Daytona, sure. which you guys are doing free installs. Correct. So just moving away, obviously, from the loud sounds sure. of Daytona Bike Week. Um, so you're telling me that for roughly seven grand, because they're getting free installs here at Daytona, or less, actually, um, or in that ballpark. In the ballpark. They're getting free installs here at Daytona, that they're gonna make the same power, that's pretty much my bike yeah. makes. At a 131. That's with crazy. all the reliability of a stock displacement. Because as you go bigger, stuff yeah. wears out faster. Yeah, yep, yeah. exactly. It's that's very true. Yeah. So, one that's absolutely mind blowing. Um, for many of you out there who don't follow all of my build content, um, I always state in a lot of my videos, if I can go back from the very beginning, if somebody said, Michael, if you had a blank slate, how would you build your bike, right? Given after all the work that's been done to it, I always say, I would have taken a stock, 114 right bike and i would have just hit up trash and i would have got a turbo kit put onto my bike because of all the time and labor in building a motor shot fees the whole nine exhaust, exhaust. air cleaner too. oh yeah you can so, you can do it uh, i mean a lot of our customers that have been following us for a long time no they show up they might have had the bike for six months they show up with a completely stock bike because they know better yeah they're like oh you already told me once i already made this this mistake yeah i mean you're getting a 40 percent increase in power by spending more or less seven thousand dollars let's just say it's so a round crazy. number That's okay crazy. spend yeah. seven if you want to put on you know sound just exhaust air cleaner and a tuner you're walking out of the Harley dealership for two, three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars, yeah. To get 10, 15 extra and horses. that's even depending on the exhaust. Yeah. Because you know you're getting. I'm not going to name any brands yeah. out there. But well, our exhaust is a thousand dollars. But well, let's say you didn't do this. Let's yeah. say they were like, oh, I, I, I want you know Joe and Joe yeah. Schmoes, right? Which is yep. marked up insane, yep. right? At nineteen hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, for an exhaust, right? And then now you need a tuner and a Very cleaner, clear. and maybe you want a stage two and get a cam. Yep. Now you're at you know three the same amount of money. exactly yeah. yeah you're 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 up there and so for those of you who don't know how much money I put into my motor build my motor probably has at least I know just when we put on the kit you're looking at about close to ten grand then with all the extra work that I've done to my motor build you're probably closer to around thirteen or fourteen thousand to where my bike sits today that's crazy it's crazy and it's not for everybody yeah. but it's an option yeah it's an option you should explore just so you know what what you're in for yeah um, you know we're at daytona bike week we've been doing installs at sturgis bike week for like 13 14 years we're really good at this plus we have a full circuit shop in arizona we do turbo installs all the time along with motor builds and everything else so we're not against motor builds of course no we i know do, you guys are a performance shop yeah we're yeah, performance yeah. shops we yeah. love them and there's a there's a seat for every rider yeah and this is everybody says but yeah. you know it's just an option yeah. and it's a good option it's an affordable option it's the best bang for your buck if you want to make more horsepower cool. increasing 40 percent over stock just eight pounds of boost on pumpkins that's crazy and then too at least for me and i was sharing this with nick nick trask um for me turbos are that's why i like my car's turbos too right. it's a very like visceral it's a very it's a different experience yeah. and then two the power from all motor versus a turbo it feels very different it's way different as well and it, it's a really cool feeling you almost feel like you're in like a video game or a movie and you hit like the nitrous switch yeah. you know and it's yeah. like oh yeah it's, you know it's very very different i you know i ride a naturally aspirated bike i love it i love the sounds it's just the nastiness of it but nothing beats a turbocharged bike i guarantee if you come and buy a turbo from me the first thing i'm going to tell you on your first ride is like when you come back you're going to be smiling I've been challenged on this, and the biggest, toughest dudes always come back with this. They can't help it. Yeah, they come cool back, and they're almost smiling before they see me, and I'm yeah. just, I just have to point at them, and then they smile. Yeah. Because it's that much fun. Yeah. I mean, it's pee your pants fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different, different experience, yeah. for sure, for sure. Okay, now, so that's that's stage one. Now, what is the stage two, assuming that they have a big motor bike, what is the stage two going to set somebody back 
sure. for a turbo cam. So stage two starts at $76.50 for either the Fury or OG kit. $78, $100 for the Assault kit, $8,080 for the Typhoon, and the kit that we saw on the Assault bike, the stainless steel TIG welded all fancy, that's the Assassin kit, that's $10,000. But that is, let's say, you know, somebody's watching and they are the, look, I want the best of the best, the high, meaning the highest quality, yeah. you're, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. the highest level of customization. I want the all bells and whistles version. That is what we were looking at on that bike. That's where we're at, but if you see one of our other kits and there's some things that you want to change with it, we can do that. We're a custom shop. On a stage two kit, we're always going to build it to order, so you have a little bit of leeway. Um, I think you're going over to PM a little later. Yep. Check out their anniversary bike that has one of our Typhoon kits on it. Yeah. But it's not a Typhoon kit that you'll ever see on anybody's bike because we made it specially for them to fit their mid controls and things of that nature. Yeah. So we can do a lot of things. You just have to ask. Do you realize when we can do anything? It's literally time, materials. That's what you're in charge for. I mean, the turbo kit's the turbo kit. We're going to make sure it works. But you know, the sky's the limit as far as that goes. Eric, thank you so much again for your time today. If you guys have not yet already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. This way you can stay up to date on all the content that I'm putting out there. There's gonna be a lot of turbo content that's going up, so you'll wanna stay tuned in for that. And then also, I'm gonna go ahead and tease you guys here with a little something, but we might be throwing a turbo kit on my bike. It's a possibility, so. <laughs> It might, it might be an option. So uh, you'll have to stay tuned in for another video if you wanna find out if it's something that I do on my bike. Remember, and we'll close out with this, make sure you're putting good energy out there into the world and you're paying it forward. I'll check y'all out later. Bye now.